Time for a good old fashioned roast of me since people think I only ever comment on other people's videos. Newsflash, the th reason why I criticize the things I do now is because I used to be guilty of a lot of them and I recognize the biases that I had and I see them in other people and I don't like it and I would like them to change sooner than I did. So here we go, this is a roast of me. Hey, look at that flash. It's fitted too tightly. Look at that pain face. This Arabian, my horse Farley, was a fucking saint. I did not deserve him. But just because I used equipment like this back then doesn't mean I still need to endorse it now. Behind the vertical, incredibly disconnected and hollow through the back. I thought this was chill. I also used draw reins all the time on this horse, and when I was showing him on the Arabian circuit, I had a thin twisted wire bit that was about this thin, and I also rode in a Kimberwick often. I also would have defended all of that shit until I was blue in the face back then. I posted this back on my Tumblr way back when, and if I had a gun, which I don't because I'm in Canada, I would literally shoot me off of this horse right now just based off of the caption alone. Yes, I know I'm unsafe. Yes, I'm not wearing a helmet or proper riding gear. Yes, I don't give a shit. It's dangerous. I lived. KK, bye. Thanks fucking edgy as shit goddamn newsflash just because people like you and follow you on social media doesn't mean you know what the fuck you're doing and that is proven in this photo because people followed my tumblr i'm wearing moccasins this horse is a saint those barrels have no ground rail on either side if he hit one it would roll literally just shoot me right now that horse deserves better. I am so sorry to anyone who had to experience this in real time. I'm so fucking sorry. This was the most lovely off the track thoroughbred that I had named Dallas. Just a wee little five-year-old here straight off the track, basically. And I'm riding him in draw reins. Look at that. I'm also using SMB boots, which I hate now because they trap a lot of heat. On his legs, not mine. And I'm riding in cowboy boots. Hashtag Wanglish. And a poorly fitted saddle with a half pad that doesn't fit the saddle. And a figure eight bridle that is not necessary at all, but I liked it because it was cute, I thought. So yeah, that that existed. And did he need those draw reins? No, he needed to learn how to stretch and relax more. Did I care? No, because I thought that draw reins would make it happen faster. Same horse, Dallas, wearing a three ring elevator bit and a figure eight. People actually told me not to do this and I got really pissed off when they did. I got so mad. And then also just the unnecessary five point breastplate. Classic upside down neck there. So yeah, I criticize this bit because I know the exact motivation behind using it, guys. I've been there and I've gotten through it. Me and my pink cowboy boots on my Arabian, super hollow, completely incorrect behind the vertical. Nice martingale that's too tight because I tied knots in it to make it tighter. Chair seat, bad arms, yuck. You can just look at this horse and know that the person who owned it needed dressage lessons desperately. That fucking neck, man. What the fuck? This is what my elevator bit did. Another thoroughbred I had, that neck desperately needs help. And I also needed to learn how to fucking feed her. Could she be more behind the vertical? Since you guys liked the last video of me roasting old photos of me riding, I'm going to take it a step further and compare the old photos to my new ones and explain why the old photos are bad. So here I have my old off-the-track thoroughbred in an elevator bit. He is behind the vertical. He's very tense. He's not properly lifting his back or driving from behind. And he's broken at the pole. Not good, he's not comfortable. If you could zoom in clearer and if he wasn't all black, you would see the pain face on his face because of the conflicting signals of the elevator bit. Same thing here, very disengaged, hollow through the back, and tense. And again, you can see here he's barely even tracking up here. This time with a Pelham, thankfully with two reins, but he is hollow and high-headed and he's actually bolting towards a fence in this. And when I would half halt him when he would bolt towards fence, he'd go like this with his head to try to evade the bit pressure because it hurt him. Here's a good photo of how flat he would jump because I didn't put in the time for proper flat work and would instead use bits so that I can control him when he would rush fences. And I would use the elevator bit or the pelham to achieve this and to try to hold him back because he was that pulley. Here you can see how he does not use his neck properly over the fence. He's extremely hollow, not using his back. This horse could have been a very nice jumper and I ruined it by rushing. And then we'll look at this photo of his terrible neck once again. This is what the elevator bit did to his neck because of all the conflicting signals and the discomfort that he would hold. It turned into tension and then he wasn't able to properly use his muscles. Compared to my off-the-track thoroughbred mare I have now, and this is just a few months into her retraining, versus the photo of my other gelding, the previous one at the bad neck, that was actually after almost a year of retraining. I had regressed him. This mare was galloped in an elevator bit at the racetrack and had a ton of pole pain and discomfort and improper muscling because of that, so I was at a disadvantage remuscling her because I was working against all of that anxiety and discomfort that that had caused her. 
and yet her neck still looks this much better than his. Just to remind you again of the train wrecks of necks that I produced on Off the Track Thoroughbreds before, through my rushing and use of harsh bits and stuff like draw reins to try to force them into a frame and teach them self-carriage, as you can see, it didn't fucking do that. Photo of my Arabian behind the vertical with a too short martingale, super disengaged and hollow. Compared to my rescue horse, Milo, recently, no tack at all, just a neck rope riding around on a beach, and he is way more connected through the back and moving correctly. So you can see the legs. And he's stretching of his own accord. He actually likes to try to drink seawater, so I was trying not to let him. But yeah. And again, you can see how relaxed his neck set is in comparison to the horses that I was producing in the past. More correct use of the back and he stretches. My off the track thoroughbred mare I have now, as you can see, she's coming through from behind more properly and stretching with her neck. She could poke her nose out a little bit more in this photo. My off the track thoroughbred mare now leg yielding in a nice frame, lifting her back. Look at the difference in the jump. She's stretching and using her back and she's a greener jumper than the off the track thoroughbred black gelding that I used to have. And again, how correctly she uses herself. My rescue gelding jumping, nice use of the back. He also uses his shoulders better. Nice uphill correct canter even without any tack. Hi everyone, so I'm once again critiquing old photos of my horses. This is my Arabian gelding who is my very first horse. This is him at Region 17 Regionals for AAHA, All Arabian Horse Association. As you can see, this is a pretty profound pain face. I have him in a Kimberwick and this Kimberwick had a big copper port that wouldn't have fit properly in his mouth. But because this bit was so uncomfortable, he was more responsive to it and would soften a lot quicker. So we viewed this as a good thing and would use it for shows because it was a lot less work to have him maintain a frame. I use the word frame lightly because it wasn't a true frame. It was a false frame where we were just focused on headset. This is me showing the same horse. As you can see, he is over bent and behind the vertical and his back behind the saddle is really, really hollow. Because of how I rode him for so long and how we didn't actually teach him any proper carriage and instead tried to just force it using draw reins, kimber wicks, twisted wire bits, and other pieces of equipment, I actually made it so that he never really built proper back muscle and didn't carry his back properly. And he ended up getting a sway back a lot earlier than he would have if we'd actually taught him how to carry a rider. So it costed him some long-term physical damage that was the fault of us because we didn't ride him properly and this isn't that i didn't love this horse i loved him to death i loved him very much i wasn't doing these things with the intent of hurting him i want to make that clear and i know a lot of people who make the same mistakes i did aren't doing it to hurt their horses but i was exceptionally misled and when i was approached with information that threatened me i would go into denial and i would argue and i didn't feel comfortable accepting it and it prolonged how long it took me to really learn and start reforming my practice and honestly i think because i loved this horse so much that's why it was so hard to hear that things i was doing to him could have been harming him and that i had been taught to do those things by people who i trusted and regarded as professionals so it was really hard to start to undo all the things that i had learned and even when I did start to unlearn them and get curious about equine science, I still had so many old biases from how I was taught that I'd create issues like this by not preparing my horses properly. This was my rescue horse when he was quite young and he was overstimulated when I took him to the park for a photo shoot and we had this reaction. On the flip side, this is my homebred gelding at the same age doing liberty work the first time he ever was saddled. Completely calm, no reaction to the saddle. This is me and my rescue gelding ponying my little two-year-old on trails and he's done this extensively and he's been awesome and it's because I've prepared him a lot better from what I've learned over the years. And it's not because he's just an easier horse. I could have turned him into a terrible horse if I hadn't taken the steps. I'm able to do things with my horses now that I'd always dreamed of doing but could never accomplish because I didn't put the work in to get it done and I used equipment to cover up the holes in my training of my horses. Since recognizing where I went wrong and really working to educate myself, I've had way more fun with horses and I've been able to get more done and do better by them.